I'm sure you all have heard of the television show, Scooby-Doo, the story of a group of meddling kids that solve impossible mysteries with the help of their lovable dog in somewhat comedic and unusual ways. These classic cartoon characters are put into situations difficult to maneuver, but always unmatch the dastardly villain in the end. I remember one episode where the gang were on their way to cracking the case in the mystery machine, when all of a sudden, they realized their brakes had been cut. They were no longer able to stop. I watched with equal amounts of anticipation and stress as my favorite characters struggled to slow down and regain control of the vehicle. I sat on the edge of my seat as they only continued to speed up until they inevitably crash. Like a vehicle with broken brakes, society's dependence on the fast pace of technology makes us feel like that mystery machine, out of control and unable to slow down. The increasing speed of society alters the way inter individuals interact with the world, causing a loss of control and constant need for the new. To begin, I will examine the fast pace of technology, uncovering how a continual call for new technologies has in advanced social media platforms so quickly that currently we are beyond our ability to process it all due to their ever-changing speed. Next, I will show you how a constant connection to social media and trends damages society as it fuels our need for instant gratification, robs us of our identity, and exhausts us with its unrelenting pace. Finally, I will deal with how to cope with this current reality through Christ. Change is necessary. Change is unavoidable. Change is beneficial. Change has been happening since the creation of the world, but sometimes change is so sweeping that it takes on another word, revolution. Currently, we are in a revolution, but this one is different from ones involving bloody battles or storming of the Bastille. We are in a technological revolution where we are experiencing a tidal wave of changes that alters society as a whole. Such a turning point in our understanding can best be compared to the Industrial Revolution. Merriam-Webster defines the Industrial Era as a time of major rapid change marked by the general introduction of power-driven machinery. This shift to a dependence on machines changed everything. Home life changed according to new societal demands. Family life was devalued. City life replaced farm life. The list goes on. Production became the focus and quickly. Quickly, factories began to produce new items and goods that spilled out and over into the new era of mass society. James Benninger, an American historian, sociologist, and communications professor, explains that the greatest effect of industrialization was to speed up an economy's entire material processing system. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? Today's change is due in large part to the ideas ignited back then. The Industrial Revolution gave wings to the new ideas of our technology revolution. But let me quickly define for you what I mean by technology. According to Pulitzer Prize winning author, Nicholas Carr, there are four categories of technology. One, which increases our intellectual, or increases our physical strength, such as plows, which aid in farming. The second, increases our senses, such as the microscope, which increases our sight. The third, reshapes our environment, most easily described as various medicines. The fourth increases our intellectual capacities. This is how we take in and respond to information. For the majority of the speech, we'll focus on this last category, intellectual technologies, uncovering how a continual call for new technologies has increased society in ways that we are beyond our ability to process at all. Busyness is a common experience in today's Western society, amplified through the use of smartphones, which play an active role in continuing feelings of busyness. Have you ever realized how many people talk about how busy they are? My mom says, this week is so busy. My friends say, I don't know how I'm going to get it all done. I'm just so busy. Even the people in line at Target I don't even know say it. Busyness has become the norm, playing an active role in our day-to-day -day experience. But busyness wasn't always the norm. However, in recent years, it has taken on a life of its own. In an interview I did with Pastor John Botkin, he shares his experience with the pace, explaining that at one point in his life, his schedule was more packed than it is now, but it didn't feel as busy. It was only after the introduction of the smartphone, where the internet lives in your pocket, that things really changed. He goes on to say, life feels so much busier now. You're not just in line waiting for coffee, meditating on your day. Now, 
You're checking your bank account, checking the news, checking what your friends are doing. And it's kind of like you're creating busyness. But what I find ironic is that though, for many, busyness creates stress, when we speak of it, we speak of it like a badge of honor. In fact, to not be busy can almost feel like you're missing out. In a Sunday review for New York Times, Tim Kreider evaluates his experience with the pace, commenting, I was able to tell people with a straight face I was too busy to do this or that thing they wanted me to do. It made me, I could see why people enjoy this complaint. It makes you feel important. And to not be busy can feel like something is wrong, like you're missing out. Fear of missing out fuels the need in many individuals to follow each new craze, even if it means trading peace to remain in a continual state of stress and anxiety. It's a trap anyone can fall into, a trap made more accessible through technology. In this media-consumed culture, trends are connected through their digital connections, circulating ideas and images at great speeds to masses, which affect every area of life from the way we communicate to what we purchase. A quick change in trendy language is a perfect example of the effect media has on trends. More than ever before, words and their definitions rapidly evolve. Slang is not only created more quickly due to social media and technology, but goes out of style faster. Because once a new slang word reaches a wider audience, it loses value and must be discarded. For example, a single post from a TikTok creator with a few thousand followers at the time introduced society to the concept of chuki, a word which is used to describe an item which is roughly five years out of style. New phrases target niche audiences, audiences who want to feel part of something special, something unique. So once mass society catches hold of this trendy terminology, it loses its value and must be discarded. When someone uses a word that is seen as hate, they are quickly viewed as out of touch with the times, even though the word may have just been introduced a few months back. Ironically, it could even be argued that the word chuggy has already been so overexposed that itself is chuggy. Trendy culture controls society that is almost impossible to keep up with style, and that means, and this creates a problem. Trying to keep up with style means congesting our closets with items made to be worn in the present moment rather than looking for how long they'll last. For generations, there has been an understanding. Roland's fashion that declares all popular style must go from being trendy to outdated to trendy again over the course of 20 years. The so-called 20-year rule controlled the trend cycle for decades until TikTok took over. Since 2020, we've seen fashion from the 60s, the 70s, the 90s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, Y2K, and the early 2000s Tumblr era. Come back into style. That's a lot of trends to cram into a measly two-year period. With the ever-changing trend cycle, it means filling our closets with items made to be worn in the present moment rather than looking for how, what will endure. Clearly, this is not a problem of personal overconsumption, but also one of the in business industry as well. Fast trends in retail means fast turnaround for design. As internet personnel, producer, and writer, Hassan Minaj reports on his findings on the research of fast fashion. He says, we're not slowing down, it's affecting the rest of the industry. Gap, J. Crew, Hollister, Ralph Lauren, Burberry, and Hilfiger have all said they want to speed up supply chains to be more like fast fashion. Even these legacy brands are experiencing a direct effect needing to reduce more frequently to keep up with not only competitors, but what is now expected of suppliers by consumers. Clearly, trends lead to overconsumption, amplifying an insatiable desire for the next thing, yet we are still unable to fully digest all that has occurred. What's about being telecommunications, individuals are constantly connected and feel a need to expose their private lives at all times. With a simple flick of your thumb, you can know what Kim Kardashian is up to. In another swipe, you can see old friends you haven't spoken to in years hanging out with people you don't even know. In another moment, by clicking on a few links, you can learn who they are. You can learn their whole life story. With the rapid progression of technology, you can stay connected with friends, family, and strangers. Due to social media's relevance in our culture, 
The struggle comes in discerning when to share and when not to share. As organizational communication expert, Eric Eisenberg, speaks on the weaknesses that society offers, explaining that it progressively limits our freedoms, bringing more of our personal lives under corporate surveillance and scrutiny. We need to be connected. We need to be plugged in to what's going around us at all times. We fear not keeping up. This is one of the most harmful qualities this fast pace advances. Since we are available, or at least available to be reached, it is easy to feel like we have limited privacy. But there's always going to be new media to consume or new media to put out, and always someone to connect with. But as many of you know, and the rest of you have heard, connecting to the oh, before the smartphone, as German researchers on the impact of stress on media users confirm, connecting to the internet and through technologies were activities that needed time, planning, scheduling and the arrangement of specific equipment. Staying connected is a new experience, one that doesn't even need the type of planning that calling a friend once did. This fast pace, moving beyond our ability to process, creates an overwhelming environment difficult to maneuver. Therefore, media users feel a constant pull to participate in permanent connectedness. This kind of mindset tires and stretches individuals ultimately limiting their ability to live to the fullest. With a constant parade of ideas, it's no wonder that individuals feel stressed out, unable to take in all that they have experienced. And this creates a problem. It can lead to a crisis of identity. So that through needing to stay connected, people, specifically media users, confront a rush of ideas and this quick change of thinking induces stress and anxiety. Researchers on the impact of stress on media users confirmed that being cognitively online rather than present in the moment appears to go hand in hand with the undesirable effects of, of stress on media users. These findings stand in contrast to the notion that individuals successfully cope with being permanently online rather than becoming used to this mental state. Clearly, humans are not made to be moving at such intense rates. So the quickened intake of information induces stress and anxiety like never seen before that is often looked at as normal. Additionally, speeding images and shifting biases makes it difficult to know what you like. James Marsha, a clinical and developmental psychologist known for his research on identity, explains that one of the essential problems people must tackle is finding their identity, which requires time and thought. The pull of opinions and web of information leave many confused or easily swayed since there is simply not enough time to process all that they have experienced, which can bring about a crisis of identity. In a culture that runs on immediacy, a search for instant gratification is certain to follow. Seeking to sustain our self-pleasing impulses, we chase after the newest developments and latest phenomenons. Society acts as though being first is the greatest reward. World-renowned psychologist and therapist speaks on the addictive rush society offers. Stephanie Brown says, Speed is the race, the drive to get there first. Speed is tied to the magic of instant success. We are fueled by the rush of being first, but the society runs on the feeling of winning a race. But the irony is, it's against itself. Where advancement is made, people run toward it. Interestingly, Paul Roberts, co-executive of the refab facility known as Restart, comments on this saying, once some new increment of self-gratifying or self-promoting capability is made, a faster phone, more powerful car, a quicker delivery service, the assumption of the consumer culture is that it must be put to use, whatever the consequences. It is clear that we seek after our own interests, but with the quick and pace, we pursue them in the quickest possible way. Now, while I have noted multiple detriments that the SAS states offers, it is important to mention that it can lead to community and inspire creativity when applied rightly. In a moment, we can be inspired through various sites, finding ideas that your friends, family, boss, and even your dog would enjoy. 
Ideas that you make you laugh together, think together, and ultimately grow in community together. Just the other day, I flipped through my phone for a bit. I found ways to connect with my mom, who is remodeling the kitchen, my dad, who loves a good pun, my class, and more. <laughs> the mirage of images and onslaught of ideas did something good. They made me think of those who I love and connect with them. These posts not only bring community with them, but they also offer new ways for imagination and innovation that benefit both the creator and the consumer. Eisenberg, as well as other communication specialists, evaluated the high-speed world, noting that more than ever before, we are experiencing a niche and a narrower consumer audience. Take music, for example. Back in the day, our parents only listened to music producers wanted them to hear. Now, artists can pronounce themselves, which means there are a lot of artists and a lot of genres for people to enjoy. Just think of just Spotify's Discover Weekly. Each week, the company curates a new playlist with songs and artists for people to discover. This opens up so many doors for expanding taste and talent. And while all these are good things, the harm that comes from society's fast pace is too much to let slide. Society, causes, society speed causes overconsumption that damages the earth, a constant availability, stress and exhaustion, and self-gratifying behavior. Brown notes that the culture requires people to go full speed ahead, values maximum achievement and maximum consumption, and recognizes no limits. How long can we run in this race? With such a quickening pace, it is impossible to keep up, and we, like a vehicle with broken brakes, will crash. Though society feels out of control, there is a solution. When we turn to God, resting in him to know ourselves and finding the rest and peace he offers, we can be changed and the gospel can be advanced all the more. With developing technology, we have access to the thoughts of others and there is a persistent call to participate in a culture of busy, but reflecting on the steady nature of God offers relief. God has created us to be relationally oriented. Therefore, when we take time to care for someone else or prioritize our time in a way that shows love to another, the constant demands of the world feel less of a burden. God has created, God contrasts the ever-changing and ever-exhausting pace of life with the movable consistency that gives peace. As David writes in Psalms 62.1, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. When we dwell on the rest found in Christ, the tiring pace of life doesn't feel as big. Not only that, when we prioritize our time in a way that seeks to glorify God, new ways for, a, for advancing the gospel come about. Pastor Botkin continues to give clarity on this topic by addressing some of the ways that we see God at work in this moving society. He points out that God is using this pace of life to create a desire for something more. And now, the gospel can come into their life and be something that meets that need. It is being used by God and believers to say that there is something more than just this spinning wheel that we can sometimes feel like we're on. Creating a desire for something beyond this spinning wheel, God is working in this fast pace to point to something better. He reveals who he is in a way that gives peace. This is truly how we can cope with society's need for speed. Humans are not made to be moving at such intense rates, so relying on the, the steady nature of God stands as the best way for all individuals to find the satisfaction we all desire. With technology evolving at such unprecedented rates, interacting with the world around us often feels uncontrollable due to the call for new and better. Reaching back into the Industrial Revolution, we can understand how swiftly a focus on a busy lifestyle emerged directly. We can see its impact on technology, which speeds up the process of life, connecting individuals at all times through smartphones, which increase levels of stress and exhaustion. Technolo with technology comes the introduction of fast fashion that continually causes overconsumption. Through this amplification of society pervades our day-to-day -day life. Our unchanging God is clearly at work, which 
advances the gospel, and offers relief when we rely on him. So, when the, busy, when the patterns of busy seem too overwhelming to function, taking time out of this endlessly progressing loop to focus on all God is and focus on prioritizing our time in a way that cares for ourselves and others will make all the difference. Thank you.